God that we don't have to fear, that we can stand strong on you. God, remind us to build our house on you and not the things of this world. Lord, give us discernment so that we know to stay away from that shifting sand, God, to place our faith and our trust and our life to be built on you, God. Help us to build our lives on your word. God, as your word is is spoken to us now, God, I pray that we will absorb it, that we'll take it in, Lord, that it will become a part of us, a part of who we are and the way we live every day. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in this place. Lord, help us to be receptive to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Well, again, good morning, and, and thank you for being here. I love, I love that song, and, and uh, appreciate Harmony teaching it to us last week. Uh, it was very appropriate last week when we came Saturday morning and saw that the building was different. And uh, Maria calls us now First Baptist Church of the Nub. So, um, so I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so, she's pretty funny. So, uh, anyway, do I, I shouldn't have said that, sorry, okay, my bad, uh, well, that's what she said, so, uh, but I, I, uh, I, I really do um, appreciate you being here this morning, and, and I, and I want to talk just for a few minutes, I, I want to, um, I, I want to, you know, there's a couple of things I want to say this morning, and, um, and one, you know, one of them's kind of not gotten me in trouble, but, uh, um, but I believe there's, there's truth in it. And, uh, I think some of the, you know, some of it has come true. And so, um, the last, the last two years have been hard. Yes. I mean, they've, they've just been difficult. They've been difficult to be in ministry. It's been, I mean, it's been difficult to just, you know, to, to do life. I mean, it's just, it's been hard and, uh, and we've all kind of experienced that and we've all, uh, we've all, you know, known that i I'm amazed, uh, quite quite honestly, uh, I'm amazed at how quickly scenery changes. Does that make sense? When I'm on the track, I'm on the track about every day, uh, and and from where I stand, coaching, usually screaming, um, I can look up, and and if we're there at about five o'clock, the, the the chimes here start going off, and. And, and as I stand there, I can look up, and I can see that I, I used to could see the top of the steeple. And it was just an interesting thing, and I, and I, didn't, realize the, the, I didn't realize the importance of that in, in, in me and, and, and what that meant to me. It was, it was here, and so I was glad some people on uh, one of the goofy Facebook pages uh, were talking about the chimes and the music up here and, they, and just how much people, and people chimed in and started saying how they enjoyed it. And, and, and and so now when the music starts, I looked up and there, you know what I mean? It was just trees. You know what I'm saying? And now I, I realized this morning as I was standing here, I realized, you know, I don't even look up anymore because it's that fast. Yes. It's just that, that fast how scenery can, can, can change. And, and, and we're going to do some stuff to the to the top of the church. I mean, we're, we're going to do some things there. But uh, but to me, it was just it was just interesting how driving up. Now, the first couple of days, I was like, ugh. And then now I'm like, there it is. You know what I mean? And it's just that fast. And that's how our life moves. And, and over the past two years, we've had to do things differently. And we've had, to, uh, we've had to, to change some things. And we've realized some things, I think, that are, that are important, the, the, the things that are important to us. And, and in some instances, we realized you know, what, what was important, some, some instances we realized what wasn't all that important, and, and we could move some of those things, you know, away from us, and then we gravitated towards the things that, uh, that, that were important, and I, I'm convinced, um, I'm going to say this right, but I, I'm convinced, I don't want to say this in a way that I feel like, you know, this this virus was, was placed on us. You know, I, I, don't, I don't understand all that stuff. But when the virus happened, I'm convinced that the enemy uh, of what we believe found some joy. Do you agree with that? See, I, I'm convinced that he found some joy because since the beginning of time, he's been trying to distance us from God, Yes? We're going to read the verse in a little bit, but you know, in Genesis 3, uh, he, he, he looks at, at, at Eve and he says, did God really say that? 
And that's in the beginning, yes? I mean, that's like week four, you know? And, and, and he's already doing that. And so, so I think that he looked through space and time. And, and when this happened and they started shutting down churches and they started doing all of those things, I feel like, I feel a sense that says that the enemy was overjoyed with that. But he failed. Yeah? Because I think we're back stronger than we were before. I think the church, because of what has happened, will be stronger than it was before. Yes? Do you believe that or not? I mean, if you don't, that's fine. But but, but I'm really convinced of that. Because we learned some things that were important. And we we learned the importance of small groups, right? Those of you that are involved in small groups, when you couldn't do that anymore, there was a strain, yes? And, 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 I mean, the things that we couldn't do, we couldn't come here and, and physically worship in this room. Now, I do want you to know that throughout the entire time that the church was closed, and I'm not saying this because so you can say, yeah, Brent, this was just something that was important to me. It was, it was something, and most of you know what I'm about to say, but, but it was important to me that we always had worship in this building on Sunday morning. And so when I would broadcast the service, I broadcasted it from here. And the screens were down and the, and, the, and the music was playing. And we did that here because I just thought it was important that in God's house on Sunday morning there be worship. Yes? And that doesn't mean that you know, other churches didn't do that. That, that, that. That's For whatever reason, that was important. That was important to me. And it's amazing just how scenery changes. This, this past uh, several weeks ago... Uh, I, I coach, well, you know, I mean, I coach over at the high school uh, track and, and cross country, and we were at the we were at the um, state indoor track meet, and I had a young lady that has done real well over the past couple of years, and and we went into it, and basically she was ranked number one in the state in the long jump and number one in the state in, in the sixty, and and we, I mean, I really like. I had already planned on what my ring was going to look like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, and we went into it with that kind of attitude. And so the race started, her 60s started, and as she was running, she was out front, and, and it's, a, I mean, it's a seven-second race. It's pretty quick. You know, you travel three and a half hours and <laughs> over, and though, you know. And so we go, and, and, and she's out front, and I'm just as excited as I can be. And she gets about five meters from the finish line. And something happened, and we're not still, we don't really know. We've looked at the, we've watched the video over and over and over to try to figure out exactly what had happened. But as she got about five meters from the finish line, her leg wobbled like this. And, and as she was about to finish, her, her leg did like that, and the young lady went right ahead of her. Just a tenth of a second. And it was that fast between winning a state championship and getting second place. It was a blink of an eye. I've watched the tape a hundred times and just try to figure out what what happened. And we don't really, really know. But it was that fast. Life happens like that, doesn't it? See, some of you have gotten a phone call and, and, and it changed your life, yes? See, it happens that fast. And so this morning, I, I want to just take a, 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 just a couple of minutes and say a couple of things. And, you know, one of the, one of the fears I have, and, and we've, we've talked about this before, and you've heard, you've heard me say this, I, I, am, I am very, very concerned uh, about the future church. Now, not just the future of Satsuma, but I'm talking about the future of the American church in general. Um, I, it, it's, it's one of the it's one of the driving uh, forces in my life right now because I really am concerned about what's, what's coming. Now, I, I believe God's bigger than, I, I believe God can handle things. I, I absolutely believe that, and, and I have no doubt that that's, uh, that that's the truth. But what I worry about is this idea of consumer Christianity. The, the idea is, and, and we do it in everything, because everything that we have, our phone, everything, has these, it, it's all about consumer. And, and there are people that are, are spending lots of time right now doing research on how to get your attention, yes? And I've been in ministry since 1989, um, 
I've gone to the conferences. I've gone to, to the life. I work for Lifeway. Um, I've gone to all of those things, and I'm just telling you in a general sense, over the last 30 years, you go to these things to try to figure out how to reach people, yes? And, and it becomes very consumeristic, and, and it becomes like we're trying to sell you something, and, and oftentimes, it's very little about a relationship, and, and I want you to know here I don't want you to be a consumer. I want you to be an investor. Yeah? See, here, what I want you to do is I want you to come and see, how can I plug in? I want you to come here and not see, hey, what can I get? I hope I get something today. I hope Brent's funny. I hope something like that happens. Because, see, guys, this is bigger than me telling you a funny story. Yes? This is the difference in between heaven and hell for people. Yes? Yes? And if I'm right, there's about 20% of Satsuma that goes to church anywhere. And we've got to be real careful that we don't turn what, what is a relationship into a consumerism. Just what can I get? That's what happens. It's what can I get out of today? Not what can I put in to today? And as a church, if we're gonna if we're gonna become what I believe that God wants us to be, we can't come into the attitude with the attitude of consumerism. We've got to come in with the attitude of investing. Yes. Now I know. Listen, I know there's there's situations at times that demand. Uh, we live in a in a weird area. We live um, and it's been this way for 30 years. And we live in this kind of area where people, you know, I get mad about this here at this church, and I'll go to this church, and I'll go to this church, and I'll go to this church. And I keep going and going and going and going. And, you, and the problem is you don't plug in anywhere and you don't invest anywhere. And, and, and my fear is in people's life is, is really this, that um, I believe wholeheartedly that someone in this world is depending on you to do what God has called you to do. i say it again. Someone in this world is depending on you to do what God has called you to do. Yeah? And it may be someone sitting next to you. But someone in this world is is depending on you to do the things that God has called you to do. And I'm so thankful. I said this last week and I said it the week before. And I am so thankful For people who have invested into this church, who've poured into the lives of other people when it it was easy to leave. I'm so thankful for for people who have given of themselves and said, you know what, no matter what, this is where God has me and I'm going to stay right here. It's not this entitlement world, yes? We've been talking about that a lot. You can tell it's a frustration of mine, yes? But this is about what we can give, and this is about what we can do, and, 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 and it's not about consumerism. Now look, I, I want you to come here, and I want you to hear something that maybe, maybe God says, because I, I believe that God has, has placed this message in my life, and I believe, I, I promise you, I have been thinking about this long and hard for the past several months, and, and I want you to know that, that I'm not going to stand up here and just say stuff that I think is true. I, I want you to know, I believe that God is telling me, hey, we need to hear this. Maybe, Brent, you need to hear this. But what do people, I mean, it's a consumer thing. And that's what church has become in a lot of aspects. I want you to come here and and walk away with something. I do. I want you to come here and I want you to experience worship. I want you to join a small group because I think that's where a lot of ministry happens. And, And I say it and say it and say it and I know you're tired of it, but then join a small group and I'll stop saying it, okay? I mean, that's just the way it is. But the reality is, is that, that we come here and we pour in because God has done so much for us, yes? And it's not just about coming and sitting and soaking and, I mean, it's not those things. And, and part of my fear is, is in America especially, that's what we've made it. It's little about a relationship and it's a lot about what I like. It's little about, real, uh, you know, uh, what I can give. It's about what I can come and get. And so I, I want to talk about two things real quick, and, and then I'm going to move, move quickly through this. But, but uh, 
It's tempting to find it to just go somewhere where it's comfortable. A, a place that doesn't push us. And so we're going to push a little bit this morning, if that's okay with you, right? So I want to talk about two different areas. We're going to talk about one passage. We're going to look at kind of one through one passage of Scripture. But, but I want us to talk about a couple of different things. And, and I'm going to go pretty quick on this because I think this is, uh, uh, this is important for us. And I know what I'm about to say, some of you are going to automatically tune me out and automatically say, oh, he's just a typical preacher talking about money. But listen, I want to talk about tithing just for a second. God calls us to tithe, yes? Goes all the way back to Abraham. All the way back there. The tithe is God's and it's not ours. Listen, all the tithe in Le- Leviticus 27.30. All the tithe of the land, whether of the seed or of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. Everything we have belongs to God, yes? Everything we have is a gift. And we need to pour into that. Listen, I, I want you to know when, when the, and I, this is you, this is, this, is, this is us as a church. And I want you to know that when the pandemic happened, I, I was a little anxious because I didn't know what was going to happen. And we didn't know what was going to happen here. And we didn't know what was going to, you know, we were, we were all just kind of nervous, weren't we, Gloria? Yes. We sat in the office many times just going, let's just hide, you know. <laughs> I wore camo and just stood by the wall, you know. It didn't work. <laughs> People could still see me. It was crazy. But, 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 but here's, here's the reality. At our church, tithing went up. And so everything that I was worried about, everything that I was concerned about, God took care of. Yes? Yeah. No, listen. Two years ago, three years ago, Gloria, help me out. Was it three years ago? We had about $300 in the bank. Probably, <laughs> maybe 200. <laughs> okay. Listen, now this was Wednesday's number, so I don't know. Today may be different, but Wednesday we had 130 thousand dollars in the bank. You could clap. I, that's fine. Yeah. Look, let, let me let me just tell you something though, and and I want you to hear this because because I, I believe that we were faithful in that, and I believe that God's going to honor that. Yes. And I want to say thank you because I know it was hard and I know there were times where you might have been like me and said, I don't know that I can give this week, but I I know that that's what God's calling me to do. Now, I want you to hear this and I I want you to just, just... just please understand, we have a couple of things that you can, that you can give to, and, and, and I'm going to tell you these things, and then I'm going to move on because, uh, because I, just, I believe that we know what God's calling us to do. The way we give here, there's lots of little things that you can give to, but we give to the general budget. That's what most of us do with our tithe, which is 10% of our, our income, and that's what God you know, says to do in, in Leviticus. He says it in Malachi. I mean, it's all over the Bible. I think the money is mentioned 1,400 times in the New Testament, and so, so there's an issue there. But, 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 but here's, here's the thing. Um, we have that, and then we have the harvest fund is what we call it. And we have all kinds of other things that, that you can give to. But, but the harvest fund, what the general budget does, it goes to help uh, with the day-to-day operations. It goes to, to, uh, for us to be able to help people that come here um, in a given week, uh, maybe in a given month. There's five, six people that come up here that need something, that need some help, and we're happy to help with that. We're happy to do those things. But that's the way the ministry runs. We can run our student ministry, our children's ministry, through that general budget. And then the harvest fund is something different. Now, that was started years ago, and it went to renovate this building, and we ended that a couple of years ago. We paid that off a couple of years ago. But what we've done is encourage people to go ahead and give to it some more because we have a lot of things in this building that need to be fixed, yes? And if, you, if you're here and you don't believe me, because I feel like we've done a pretty good job in here. I love our lights. I mean, I just love what we've done in here. And we've done a pretty good job in here, but if you'll just walk into the atrium and look up, I mean, that's true, right? And so we're, we're trying to be, be good with God's money, and we're trying to make it happen, and we're trying to do, do those things. And so if you feel a need to tithe this 10%, the, the harvest fund we consider as an offering, that means above what you give. If you want to give to that, we would love for you to do that. We, we have currently in there about $36,000, I think, something like that. Thirty-six thousand three hundred something dollars in there, and so that's going to go to fix the ceilings and the air conditioners and the and the other issues issues that we have. I'm almost done with tithing, okay? Because I know I know you don't. Want, I mean, I know people. I, I know some of you've tuned me out already, and and I used to do that too when pastors talked about it. Don't 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 get me wrong. 
But God calls us to tithe. Your choice. Can I be any more clear? <laughs> I mean, you choose what you're going to do. You, you choose what you're going to look at on your computer. You choose all of these things and what you're going to do. And so I just want to say to you this morning that, that we need to be reminded that, that tithing is important. That giving to what God wants to do is important. God calls us to give our money, but he also calls to give us to give of ourselves. And isn't it interesting how the enemy can turn our thoughts to something else? Isn't it interesting how he can turn our thoughts and say, you know what, uh, that's not really what we're talking about. And listen, and you, and, you know, if you're here and you're not sure about that, you know, get home, go home and talk to your spouse about it. And say, you know, if you're, if you're a family here, hey, do we give? What, what do we give? Should we give? Should we start giving? What should we do? Can we give to the harvest? I mean, just ask. Talk about it. And you decide. I don't know what anybody gives. I don't. The only way I know if somebody even gives in this church, it happens all the time, is if I'm walking out and somebody says, hey, I forgot to put my tithe in the basket. Can you take it down there? And I take it to a secret hiding place that Gloria and I have, and I hide it there, and I don't look at it, and I don't want to know. Okay? Because that's between you and God. It, has nothing, it doesn't have anything to do with me. But my point is this. God calls us to do that. So let's do it, yeah? I mean, let's do the things that God's called us to do. Paul, Paul states this, uh, 1 Timothy 6, uh, 6, 6 through 10, it says this. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these things, we will be content. For those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Listen to this. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. What is he saying? In particular, it's the love of money that becomes a problem. Yes? Not that money's an issue. Listen, you may be in here and you may have a lot of money. I'd like to try it one day. Seriously. Like, I mean, I think that'd be fun. And that'd be really good. <laughs> Finally have that Jeep. Anyway. <laughs> Money's not the issue. Because in all of this, and this is where we're gonna, this is where we're gonna rest, and this is what I hope you'll 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 kind of hear me. Money is not the issue. It's what? The love of money that becomes the problem. Now, let me make a suggestion to you. Change that with anything. Change, change the word money with anything that, puts, that, that you put before God, yes? The love of fishing <laughs> is the root of all evil. Some of y'all are mad. Okay, stay with me. In my particular case, the love of running can be the root of all evil, yes? See, take that verse and, ta and take any word you want to and put it there. Why? Because it takes our focus off of him. There is absolutely nothing wrong with fishing, just like there is absolutely nothing wrong with having a lot of money. But what becomes the focus of your life? With anything that takes the focus off your relationship with Christ, that becomes the root of all evil. Yes? Because it's about a relationship. Not a bunch of consumerism. And sometimes I think we need to be reminded of that. What is the focus of your life with anything? If it takes the focus off of Christ, it is a problem. Paul reminds us of a couple of things here. And, and he, says, he, he says three in particular that I want us to, to kind of hit on today. He says to be content with what you have. In the first part of the verse, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. Listen, there's always going to be somebody that has more than you, yes? There may always be someone that has less than you. But it's about focus. 
I, I'm enjoying my life. I'm content with what I have, not, not because of who I am or what I've done, but because of who Christ is in my life. I know that he's going to provide. I know that he's going to provide for me. I know that he's going to provide for my family. And we may not have the best. We may not have all the stuff in the world, but we've got something. We've got Jesus in our life, and he's the center of our, our, our world, and that's our focus, and that's where we're headed. Things are great. Listen, I like things. I, anybody got an Oculus in here? Anybody got one? No, nope, I'm the only one. It's really cool. I bought one this past week because I've been saving some money, and I bought one, and, and, and yesterday I played uh, a, a Star Wars game, and Darth Vader was right here. And then I got shot by a stormtrooper. It was awesome. And I can't wait to get home because <laughs> I'm going to play chapter two today. If you don't have one, do it. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> but if you do get one, let me know because we can play online. Anyway. <laughs> my nerdness knows no boundary so. Matthew 6 26 and 27 says this it says look at the birds of the air they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them and listen to what he says are you not of more value than they yeah Hey, listen, I, I, know, I know some of us in this room, because I, I understand statistics, not because anything you've told me or anything like that. I understand statistically that there are people in this room that are struggling financially. I get it. I do. Totally understand. I want you to know that God's got you. Yeah? God's got you. Maria and I know what it's like to go to Walmart and swipe a card and pray that it works. We do. I mean, we, we've been there, and I understand that, and I understand that pain, and I understand that frustration, and I understand that anxiety, but I want you to know that, that when you fully trust in Him, when you fully trust in God, you are more important than the birds of the air, and God is not going to let you down, I promise. Now, you've got some things you've got to do too, yes? You've got to work. You've got to do things. But God is not going to let you down. And I promise you, in the, in the moments that we, that Maria and I uh, have, have, have been at our end, God's provided. I can't explain it. Not even going to try to. But he has. We need to be content with what we have. Second thing is this. Chasing stuff is going to lead you nowhere. But those who desire to be rich and fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction, please hear me again. There is nothing wrong with having a lot of stuff, but it's the desire, yeah? It's what we actually chase. I want this, I want that. But it can be subtle in our life, and it can take our focus off of the things that are really important and it's kind of like this to me have you ever been walking down a hallway and you tripped over your own feet have you, have you ever done that and then you do that silly skip thing to act like you meant to <laughs> right you walk in and you go whoop <laughs> right and everybody's going that's a freak you know and we all know what you're doing no <laughs> just stop just trip <laughs> You know? And that's what this is kind of like. I mean, we're chasing after stuff, and we're chasing after stuff, and we're chasing after stuff. And all the while, we're tripping over our own feet, and we don't realize it. We try to fake it. I mean, we try to pretend. But chasing after stuff is just going to kind of get you nowhere, yeah? I... I Yesterday, did, I did two weddings yesterday, <laughs> and it was fun. We had a blast. And in one of the weddings, the guy in the middle of the wedding changed the vows. He didn't want to do them. And I said, okay. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, he said, oh, we're not doing those. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was great. It was a great moment. But I did two weddings yesterday. The second one was my 189th wedding, okay? And I keep up with that. 
And, and here's something I haven't ever kept up with, with how many funerals I've done. But I do know one thing. I've not done a single funeral yet where there was a bunch of stuff in the casket. It was just a person, yeah? It was just a person. We, we can't take the stuff with us. And we chase after things. And, 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 and my fear is this, is that we get so consumed with chasing after stuff and chasing after stuff that we forget about what's really important right around us. And it's like we're just tripping over our own feet. And we don't realize it. Matthew 6, 26, oh, I'm sorry, I read that. Uh, Psalm uh, 37, 3 through 6 says this. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as a light and your justices as a noonday. Listen, the, the thing he says is, he says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. But that tells us we have to do something, yes? I mean, God's not just a vending machine that we go to and we put a little money in and we press what we want and out it comes. There's things that we got to do. We need to invest into who God is in our life. And my fear a lot of times is people chasing stuff is just going to lead to nowhere. Psalm 37, 3 through 6. Was that passage? Now, third thing is this: non non contentment with what we have, and chasing a lot of stuff leads somewhere. But when we're just not satisfied, when we're not satisfied with who who God is, we're not satisfied with who Jesus is in our life, and we start, you know, we're not content with the things around us, and we start chasing stuff. It's going to lead somewhere. Paul is warning Timothy and us today. He says this, For the love of money, we talked about it before, the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and have pierced themselves with many pangs. It's the love of money that becomes the problem. Anything, again, that loses your focus, anything the enemy can use to distract you. I referred to this verse a little while ago, Genesis 3, 1. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? It was that simple. Yes? And it changed the course of the world. And it was that simple. Simple. It's getting to the end of a finish line where you're going to win state. And something happens. It was that simple. Guys, we've got, to, we've got to make sure that Christ is forefront in our life, yes? Listen, we've got to make sure that Christ is the forefront of this church, yes? Don't. Don't be a consumer. Invest. Give of yourself. What has God called you to do? And do it. Yeah? It's a simple thing with tithing. Just, it, that's what God tells us to do. Do it. it. It's the things that God calls us to do that, that, that we ignore. And we try to figure out. And we try to work around. And we try to see all of those things. We try to figure it out. And all those things. I go to the conferences and they want to tell. I get, listen, I get probably three emails a day from people trying to tell me how to grow a church in a pandemic. Can I tell you this? Nobody knows. Here's what we got to do. We got to remain faithful to Jesus, yes? That's what we do. We do the things that God has called us to do. We do those things. And I'll guarantee you, pandemic or not, we will grow, yes? Yes? And it's not because of us, but it's because of who he is. What is it that you are pursuing? Remember what is important. 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19. Because see, he says all of these things. He, he says the pursuit of money or the, 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 the love of money is the root of all evil. And he says all of these things. And, and before he got to this point, he was warning Timothy of some other things that he needed to, he needed to pay attention to uh, in his life. 
And then he gets here and he says, look, he says all of this stuff. And then he says, you do this and I promise you it'll be okay. 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19. As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes of the uncertainty of riches, but on God. Not, hmm, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with with, with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in the good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of what which is truly life. He's saying, look, if you'll pursue me with all that you have, even if you have a little or if you have a lot, you pursue me with everything that you have and you are going to find life like you never thought possible. Yes? Remember what is important. Remember the things that are important. What is your focus? And, and, and look, if you're going through it, it will pass. I said this a couple of weeks ago, and I want to say it again. Whatever it is you're searching for, I want you to hear me today. God is better. Whatever it is you're trying to pursue, God is better. I please hear those words, yes? Yes? And see, for some of us in this room this morning, this is what we need to come to grips with. What is taking my focus off of my relationship with Christ? What is it that's doing that in my life? And then you need to move on to something else. Yes? See, the enemy's done a good job over the past couple of years. But I want to say this, and I want you to hear me. We are still here. And we're not going anywhere because of what God has done in our lives. Yes? Whatever it is you're chasing, and, 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 and listen, God is better. God is better. There's temporary pleasures of this earth. Yeah, there are. Absolutely. There are things that make us happy. When that stormtrooper shot me, I thought it was the greatest moment of my life. Sadly. <laughs> I didn't think it was the greatest moment of my life. Second greatest. Anyway. <laughs> what are you chasing? And what are you pursuing? And we need to ask ourselves those questions. And we need to answer them honestly in our life. And we need to do the things that God has called us to do. Yes? Let's pray. God. Thank you for today, and thank you for your love for us. And, and, and I know that, I hope not everybody tuned me out, but God, I pray that you'll remind us of the things that you've called us to do. And, and I pray that you'll give us the strength and the, <clears throat> and the courage to do the things that God has called us to do, that you have called us to do. I, I, I pray that you'll help me to realize the focus of my life, and, and, and I want that to be on you. I, I want my life to reflect a love for you to those around me. And I, I know <laughs> I know that there are just moments <laughs> in my life that I've tried to approach this, uh, this, this job and this calling in a consumer way, in a way that how can we reach and sometimes I forget about you. And you call us to be faithful to you first. And so God, remind me of that. Remind me of the love that you have for, for me. God, I pray that for each of us in this room that we will come to this place where we understand that this is not about take, take, take. But it's about give. Giving of our life, our heart, our mind, our soul to you. We love you. It's in your son's name. Hey, if you'll keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed just for a second. <clears throat>